right. Well, hi there, everybody. Oh, I don't know where to start again. <laughs> this is starting. Well, hi there, everybody. <laughs> False start. Uh, thanks for starting, uh, for joining us again this week. Um, if you um, read my post a little bit ago, I wasn't sure we were going to do something tonight um, since my birthday is coming up on Friday. And if you notice, this is a very different kitchen. Um, we're out in a cabin in Breckenridge, Colorado, um, celebrating and taking a vacation. So, um, but we thought it would be fun to show you guys how we make cocktails um, since we have a slightly healthier spin on, I never necessarily endorse alcohol consumption, but if you're going to, um, there's ways to make it healthier and uh, so you have less of a hangover the next day also. So we're going to show you how to do that today. And uh, I'm going to have um, my, so I'm Dr. Marissa Soski, this is Dr. Peter Anderson. Um, he is my partner in life and partner in crime. So it, he's, he's the one who kind of came up with this um, recipe for, for healthy cocktail making, so I'm going to let him explain it. All right, it's a pretty simple recipe, um, but one that you can't forget. It's called the 234. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. So, two parts alcohol, three parts juice, four parts sparkling water. Throw it on ice and you're ready to roll. We're going to go over that again, but it's very easy to remember. 234. Okay. So I think Marissa was going to start by cutting the uh, cutting the uh, fruit. Cut the fruit, yeah. So today we're going to be using orange, lime, and uh, persimmon juice. So uh, usually when we make cocktails at home, orange and lime is kind of the the staple, the backbone of all the drinks. And then we like to mix in uh, whatever fruit we have around. Sometimes it's figs, sometimes it's mango, sometimes it's pineapple, um, or a combination of that. Um, but today we have a, a really, really beautifully ripe and smelling delicious persimmon. So we're gonna throw that in there. So, um, so I'm just, I mean, the ratio we're gonna do today is uh, one orange, two limes, and one persimmon. So we're just gonna get juice on this. Yeah, we should actually probably do the two oranges, two limes, because usually you balance your orange with your lime. Is that okay with you? Oh yeah, totally. All right. I'm gonna just cut one more up for you. Okay, perfect. Or we just do one more. Instead. Yeah, it's usually one of the sweeter fruits to one of the more sour fruits. What was that? I said, or we just do one lime. Also. Or we could just do one lime, true. But we do have a full persimmon, and that is a lot. So we're gonna make up plenty of citrus juice to blend that into. And then today, um, I'll let you explain the alcohol as well. I'm going to just throw those in there, and yeah, we'll go ahead and start throwing the alcohol in. So, a couple shakers. If you don't have cocktail shakers, you can always just make it in a cup yep. and mix it together. Yep. So starting with the two parts of alcohol, and we today are going to go a 50-50 tequila and mezcal. And what do you like to call that when we go 50-50 tequila and mezcal? It's, uh, it's loosely known as the pistolero, the gunslinger. So there's the tequila. Here's the mezcal. Um, but the nice thing about this, this recipe is you can use any spirit you want. It works really well with gin, whiskey, vodka, rum, any of it. Um, it's really just about mixing and matching your fruit and the, um, and the, the spirit that you're using. Well, I will say while we have a little this meeting, uh, this, this video today, um, is in dedication and I'm raising money for the National Lawyer National Lawyers Guild. Um, so if you would like to donate, you can donate at the link below uh, the description of this video. The National Lawyers Guild helps provide legal care for people who uh, who uh, who can't afford um, representation, and they can help you get access to resources and uh, provide legal uh, representation for you. So they're a really great organization. 
So I'm going to throw in the four parts sparkling water now. And then make sure um, if you like a salt rim to save at least one of the halves of limes that you um, that you're juicing because you can use that. Uh, we're going to use that to make a salt rim. All right. So all the juice, the citrus juice is done. So now we're going to pour this into the blender and blend it up with a persimmon. And since this is a persimmon or any other soft kind of fruit, you want to blend it on low. Because you do not want this to turn into a smoothie. Um, and if you blend the persimmon too fine, or things like a mango, um, what else do we use it? So a plum, or peaches, things like that. On a, on a Vitamix, we'd set it to two at the top. So here's on one, it'll beat it up, we go to two. And that's probably good. You don't want to over blend it. Otherwise, it'll all come through your screen when you go to filter out the pulp. So next. So I'll do the filtering. Okay, if you good. Want to do the salt room. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So the next thing is then you just filter it out, and that's what makes it so that your your juice and your cocktail is just really clean. It doesn't have a lot of pulp and stuff in it. Just really yeah. nice and smooth. And the more pressing you do, the thicker, the more nectary that cocktail is going to be. So always aiming kind of for, you know, usually we don't press it all anymore. We just, Marissa will show you. Yeah, so instead, you don't press, it's more just like scraping along and kind of stirring it versus pressing it. And the way that we usually salt a rim is you'll take one of those limes that you pressed, just use that along the rim, and this is what's gonna help that salt stick. So once you get it on there, then you'll take your salt plate. Usually you want a plate with, uh, well, a rim or ridges, uh, well, a rim, yeah. And then just go around in a circle, pressing the salt to the outside. You go around a couple times and voila. Beautiful. Beautifully salted rim. Marissa does not like salt on her rim, so we will only salt one of these cups. Um, and you can do this with all kinds of things. You can do, you can mix chili uh, powder with your salt. You can do a sugar rim, um, you know, or coconut sugar rim. Um, but the li using lime to wet the edge versus water really helps the salt stick more, more so than uh, just water or anything like that. And it gives it that lime flavor, so you kind of have a little lime salt instead of just salt. Um, so how would you blend this differently if you use something thicker like pineapple? Oh, you mean something more hearty? Hearty, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I would blend it probably a little bit faster, including if it were frozen pineapple that I was pulling out or chunks of pineapple. I would blend that a little bit faster. Um, using frozen mango is going to be a tricky one because you got to break it up, and at the same time, you're going to be blending it too high. You're going to end up with a very nectary drink. So pineapple, it's nice because it's very fibrous. It'll hold together. So I'd blend it on a, on a Vitamix, that'd be about a four. It's a four out of 10. So Vitamix goes up to 10. But again, the soft fruits, no higher than two and you know five, 10 seconds tops and you probably got it about as good as you want it. Well, that's looking delicious. Oh, and if you like spicy, you can also blend like jalapeno or serrano pepper in there too, and that's really nice to add a little kick to your drink. Yep. Wow, it's looking delicious. Not really much more to do that. Nope. So you see that there's still like a bunch of goop, fruit goop in here, and that's perfect. So that's just going to go straight in the compost. And we're going to do our three parts juice. And I'm going to actually dump that one back in and make sure we had it really good and stirred before we start. And now the three parts juice. So 
but that's nice. Definitely. Thank you. So the one thing you're going to want to be careful about now is the fact that you've used carbonated water. And when you shake that shaker, you end up with some pressure. So the key there is a couple shakes, probably two shakes at most, and then pull the top off, let the pressure bleed, and you can shake it a couple more times if you feel it's necessary. So here we go. Not too bad. And Voila, the two, three, four. It happens to be past seven o'clock here. So. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks for joining us on our cocktail making class. I hope you enjoy this and I hope you can make some delicious cocktails in the future with your loved ones. All right, well, stay tuned uh, in a couple of weeks. I'll be back on again. Thanks for joining us today. Um, thanks for bearing with us as we make it a short one, but a very fun one. And we're going to go celebrate my birthday. So, bye. Bye-bye.